we wanted to do a crusade and we invited the man of God. And when we invited a, the man of God and the posters came out, it was everywhere on Facebook. Another man of God in that city now called me and said to me, this preacher you have invited is a genuine man of God. And there is something I can tell you about him. While you receive him, make sure you honor him very well. Let him touch his heart. And if he prays for you from his heart, it, God will honor it. I, I say thank you for this information. So we went around the city. We got him the best accommodation in the whole city as at that time. Got police escort to make sure that the way was cleared anytime he we got the kind of food <laughs> we got food <laughs> before he came we got his footwares toothbrush toothpaste everything we got a self-help kit and it was there towel all kinds of things so that he will not ask for anything and we come to pick him up in a very long convoy all we're doing was honoring him first day second day third day then you now ask god what does this boy want Because we didn't take offerings in that meeting. The only offering we took was giving the congregation an opportunity to sow into his life. We didn't take offering. Thousands of people were coming. We didn't take any offering. In my own opinion, then, workers in the state were being owed salaries for nine months, eight months. I didn't feel it in my heart. That it was justified to come take offerings in that crusade when they have not been paid. I know they have not been paid for nine months. So we didn't take any offerings. We identified with the situation of the workers of the land. The only offering we took in the crusade was to allow people to give the man of God so that they will be blessed. When we calculated what the people gave, it was not even much. That whole crowd. Okay. The whole crowd. And it was a very huge crowd. You know the crowd. What came from that offering was not so much. It was still what we added from the ministry that now made this substantial. On the fourth day of the crusade, this man of God now comes to the altar. I said, come. God spoke to me. That I should release something to you. The ability to work miracles. Meanwhile, I used to pray for people. They used to get healed. And he prayed for me. I don't fall under the power. But I felt that day. Not because I didn't want to. I hurt myself. But it was real. It was genuine. It was very genuine. The energy that flowed there, you couldn't remain. And I was dizzy on the ground when I stood up, left. Early in the morning, we were with him, gave him all the gifts. People brought stuff. Then I went for the first meeting after that crusade. And when I went for that first meeting, they brought a man that was they shot the man they put a gun in his ear arm robbers put a gun in his ear and shot him and the bullet came out of this place and that was how he lost hearing in his left ear and the man came to the crusade and while i was preparing for the meeting jesus came and spoke to me and he said i will heal a deaf man that was not spectacular because i've been seeing deaf people healed before but I said, thank you, Jesus. And I came for the crusade and preached. And while I was still preaching, Jesus spoke into my ears again. I said, remember, 
a deaf man and that man is here I led people to Christ and gave it up the altar call the counselors were talking I asked the counselors to stop that join the and I prayed for the sick and God replaced everything that was damaged in that ear he replaced it that was the the day when creative miracles started in my ministry went somewhere in the south south to preach somebody's kidney was damaged and I prayed for him he went back to the hospital and they saw that he had a new kidney they were trying to put him on dialysis and they tested he had a new kidney I went to Cano to preach and the guy that was playing the keyboard he was not as skilled as most of our guys but I needed sound to enter into the spirit he was praying rubbish but at least he was playing after the meeting our Cano pastor brought him and said he was a sickler and I laid hands on him and I prayed for him and he went back for a test and the test was taking hours to come out because he had a doctor that was managing him he became AS so the doctor was he tested his reagents you know in in chemistry first of all he tested the integrity of the reagents he did that and then tested again it was AS no he brought his new set of reagents he tested it and God became angry and made the man AA the keyboard man his genotype changed from SS to AA I remember still in Kano there was no flight going to my city so I now took a flight to Kano so that I could complete the the thing on road and when our pastor picked me up from the airport he drove me straight to BUK that there was crusade I said I came to sleep in your house so move the next day this part of the sleep and while I was preaching while I was preaching while I was preaching they brought a lady and she her legs were dry on wheelchair and so that I will not I will not claim that I didn't see her they put her clothes here like this Do you know what these guys were in the rain the rain was falling heavy rain and there was a massive crowd in the rain and the power of god broke out on that field me too it was only where i was staying that there was they put one covering so i was the only one that was not in the rain i couldn't take it so me too i had to stand it i prayed for this crippled lady and in my spirit the way i feel when people get healed I felt that. So I said, you are healed. There was nothing that happened. And I left. On the seventh day after that crusade, the lady woke up from her bed. That is, she didn't know. And she just started walking. It was when she had taken a few steps that she now realized those dry legs began to walk. There were many ministers there that day. I prayed and left. And then continue my journey the next day. Seven days later, her legs began. I've seen people walk before, but not dry legs. A new dimension of ministry opened. Why? Because I honored a man and God acknowledged it. Don't think, don't think if you don't have a heart for honor for our God, that God will make you anything. Giving is critical very critical you want to go high it's honor it's honor it's honor have you seen that the scripture says honor the lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy prosperity shall burst forth with new wine you shall burst forth there's power in honoring God. Even your children, he will never allow them to be fugitives. Your children will be safeguarded. We seek men of sufficient stature. 
that will move the hand of God to have mercy on a lineage to be, have mercy on a generation it starts by honor 